Hello, my name is Robert Marquez, and this is a video on Model View Presenter. This is the View and Presenter Implementation video number 10 in a series I've been working on. This video will cover the following. We're going to create a helper class for visual components in the application. There will actually be a few helper classes created. We are also going to take some time to add visual components to the main view. The main presenter will also get some updating. We'll be creating a help about view that reads the application assembly properties and we'll use messaging to show how that communicates with the view and presenter combination. We'll also create a context menu to support the more icons option on the main view. That's the icon with the three vertical dots. And we'll do a creation and tracing of raised events so we can follow along and see how the events are raised and captured on the receiving end by the presenter and how the presenter responds to the raised event by calling some of its own operations. Where we last left off, we were at the main view presenter, the main window here. Uh, before we get further into adding graphical components onto here, we need to create some helper methods. I put together a few helper classes to help deal with the formatting of buttons and forms and picture boxes that are going to be used in other areas. There's no cascading style sheet support in WinForms that I could find, so I'm going to use these helper methods to help uh, deal with the formatting, consistent formatting between forms. So I'll start with the presentation layer and create a new folder here. And this folder will be called the common folder for common libraries used items in the presentation layer area. So the first class I'm going to add is a button helper class. I will call that button helper. And I'll bring over the code for that. And so there, there are only a few items in here set to borderless. I have some buttons I'm using on the main form that are basically borderless buttons with a few other properties defined here, including some subscriptions to events like the mouse move and leave event, which I then change to things like a cursor with a, a hand and then restore it back to the default. I'll set groups of the buttons visibility on and off at times, depending on what's going on. And there's an underline. I'm using a label to serve as an underline under the currently active button. And I'll be moving that around. So that will be part of my button helper to keep those things together. Next, under the commons area, I'm going to add another class called form helper. And there's not much in this one other than some typical properties I set to either a regular form, which would be here, or a dialog box that's modal. I'm doing this so that I don't have to remember to click all these settings on every, every time a form is created. I'll just create the form, lay it out, and run these helpers on it to make sure that they have the same consistent uh, properties. So that's my helper form. The next one would be the picture box helper, which is going to be similar. Again, so in this case, I pass in a picture box. I'm going to subscribe to its events. I'm basically going to set up for the mouse move and mouse leave. If it's moving over a picture box, I'll be setting it to a cursor hand or the default cursor. Also, sometimes on a picture box, when I click it, I might want a context menu to appear. So I have this 
part of this class so that the context menu can appear right below the picture box that's been clicked. So that's the purpose of display context menu. So now that we have our three helper classes in place, we can go on and move to the main view, which is where we had left off before here. And let's get started with that. Get our, our toolbox ready and what we're going to need. So we do need panels. I'll need two panels. So I'll start off with two panels. There's one. There's the second one. And move these out of the way. I don't want my controls to get caught up in them. I'm going to need three buttons that I'll use for navigation. One, two, three. Move those out of the way. They landed right in the panel. I didn't want that, but we'll move those out. And I'm going to need four picture boxes. So we'll go down to our picture boxes. One, two, three, four. So for starters, I will need a panel on the top with background image. I'll go ahead and start with the bell for notifications. I will then need a user info one. And I'll need the more options. Okay, so what we need now is set the images to stretch option here, stretch image. So we'll do that for all three. And they need to be a size. I'm gonna go with 28 by 28. a large picture below the top banner of a shrub line. That will go there. And we have our three buttons here. in our picture or our panel area where the user controls will be displayed. A little room for the underline. And for the underline, we're going to use a label. And this label will be uh, 
back color black. Our label will automatically size through code, so I'll just leave it there as a marker. And for our first button, this is our news button. And our plants button now. Finally, our departments. And our underline label. We have a garden picture box. See, we now have the more options picture box. A user info picture box. And a notification. Bell picture box. And this large panel here we'll call the options panel. and the large panel on the bottom. This is our user control panel where the user controls will be placed. What I want to do next is work on the help about menu that will be available under this more options menu that will allow for us to see a very simplified version of model view presenter in action before we get into the more um, complex parts of the application. So I'll start with the views area and add a new form there. And this will be a help about view. Help about view. Well, let's see, we also need a corresponding presenter. So under presenters, there will be a new class. This is, it's not the GUI. So we'll add a class called help about presenter. Help about presenter. Then getting back to our view. And our toolbox. We'll start off with a picture box. And we'll set the size mode on that to stretch. That'll help it fit in. And 
And we're going to need a few labels on here. About five labels. There's one, two, three, four, five labels. We're going to have them at a fixed size, no automatic, so we'll turn the automatic sizing off. centered with the text. So our text line will be centered. This first one will be a product label. Next one will be our version label. And next is the copyright label. Then the company. And finally, the description. And the description will be a little larger to allow for word wrapping. And finally, we'll need a close button at the bottom. And let's see. Help about view. Okay, so let's take a look at the code area. And we'll go ahead and place the code in here that already exists and go over it. Now, let's see. We need our help about interface created. So I'll go ahead through edit and refactor the extract interface. quite spot right, I don't know why. I help about
some mismatched names and product label. What happened there? Product label. Spell that wrong. And copyright label. Case lowercase issue with that one. That about did it. We'll just line up a little bit of this area here. So in Model View Presenter, we try to make the work done by the view as simplistic as possible, or as some might say, try to make the view dumb. So the view is not doing much here. We do have one method called setAboutValues that requires the caller, caller to pass in the values we see here, title, name, version, and so forth. And then they'll be assigned to the visual controls on the uh, form. So it, we're going to leave it up to the help about presenter to derive these values from the project assembly uh, objects, which we'll take a look at. So we're, we're done with the view part here. And as we can see, when the view loads, it's going to call set appearance, which is one of those helpers we have for form helper to help make it look the way we want it to look. And we're also going to raise an event that the help about has been loaded and at that point the presenter will gather these values and call this function here in the help about so that we can see these values on the help about form. So what we need to do right now is get to the help about presenter so we can get those values figured out. So we'll get over there Help about presenter. And we'll bring those values here as well. And take a look and see what it is we have. So again, we don't have the interface file yet, so we'll let it Visual Studio generate that. So we have an internal field, help about view, which allows going to allow our help about presenter to have a reference to an instance of the help about view. The help about presenter constructor is defining a help about view to come in. So since we're using Unity container, Unity will automatically create an instance of help about view. We don't have to create it. With this instance coming in, we're going to pass it to our internal field, help about view. And then we'll begin the subscription process of events. So in our subscription process of events, we're going to call the help about view object, which we'll have captured here at construction time. We're going to ask the help about view object to okay, give us access to its defined event called help about view load event which should be defined in the help about view. So if we take a look at the help about view at the top, here is the definition or the declaration of the help about view load event raised. And it's public. So we access it here. And with the plus equal sign, we are basically registering to it, subscribing to it. And we're saying here in this code module, the help about presenter, there is a method called on help about view load raised events. So when this event is raised on the view, here in the presenter, run this block of code on help about, which is right here. Take a look. 
And when we reach this method to run, here we're, call, we're using our reference to the help about view object, which is in our internal field. And we're going to call its method called set about values, because that's defined in the help about view we saw just a while back. And here are the values coming in the parameters, the values being passed to the parameters. And if we look at those values down below, we have assembly title is just a function name, a method name. And what we're doing here is, is we're using the assembly object to call get executing assembly custom attributes. This is related to reflection. And we're saying, give me the value for assembly title attribute. And it actually returns a collection, but we're using a little link syntax here to say, give me only the first instance. And it comes back and assigns it to our variable called attribute, which we're declaring as dynamic. And we could have used a var, but I'm using dynamic because when we use dynamic, the compiler is not going to check and see if this object called attribute has a property called title. It doesn't get checked at compile time. It will be checked at runtime, so it's going to let us go ahead and put whatever we want after the dot. When the program's running, it will look for it at that time. So dynamic will let us delay the uh, resolving of this until runtime. So I've used the word dynamic in all cases here. Well, in most cases, like the assembly version, I didn't. I just simply said assembly, give it to me, the name version, and I get it. But for the rest of them, where I'm pulling out like the assembly description attribute or the assembly product attribute. They're all being assigned to assembly and I'm accessing a value here. Dot description, dot product. Those will be come into existence at runtime when this line of code is hit. So one question might be how did I know to use assembly description attribute? If we look in our presenter Presentation layer, there is a file here called assembly info CSS CS. And here we have our assembly objects on the left here and on the right of the colon, assembly title, assembly description, assembly and so forth. And the values are already in. Now we can type these values in here and they'll work, or you can provide these values in at the property level of presentation layer. So if we look at the build, back to application actually, and click the assembly button, we'll see here title, description, company, and so forth. But the names closer to the code that you want to find are over here in the assembly csinfo file. Assembly title, assembly description, and so forth. And we're using the word attribute as a suffix on these. So these values are all pulled. These are just functions returning the value. So the return values are coming in, being fed into the parameters for this call set about values, which is in the help about view. And the help about view in turn will receive these values here and just pass them into the text boxes or labels actually that we created for our view, which of course are here. Here are those labels. We're going to get back to the main view now and try to wrap it up there for today. So what we want to do is add a few more items. Main view will need a context menu. So I'm going to add one now. And this will be called more options context menu strip. This is in support of the more options menu here, the three vertical dots. And we're going to also add to this form a timer. The 
timer will be called Department Detail Timer. This will be needed for the Department Detail view when we get to it. We're not at that point yet, but I'm getting it set up now. So we have two new controls, a Department Detail Timer for a Detail view, Department Detail view that will come later. Any more options, context menu strip, and we can actually begin working with that now. So the first item will be a help about. We'll use this to launch our help about window. A settings and an exit. The exit we can quick easily set up now. It's just a simple close. On the help about though, what I want to do now is before we add more code, I'm just going to bring over the rest of the code for the main view here. That'll include what I just added now. And there'll be a few adjustments we're going to have to make. The user info picture box, we're not going to do that today, so I'll just comment references to that out. The options panel, we should have that. Let's take a look what's happening there. This is the options panel. Options panel. Go back to the code. Okay, it recognizes it. Let's see what else to get user info picture box. I'm just going to comment this one out for now. We're not ready yet for the user info box. Let's see what else we can do here. The user picture box click again. We're not supporting the user info box today. That will be for another time. That pretty much covers a lot of it. So <clears throat> let's get on the focus here with the help window we're trying to get launched here. So let's find all references to things related to help. I'll just put in the word help here. So we do declare an event handler for help about menu click event. So the main view will raise this event. We therefore need to declare it at the top. Looks like we're taken to the bottom. We have a help about tool strip menu item. That's from the context menu. So again, reminding as to what that was. That was this here. The Context menu strip, when the help about is double clicked, actually it is um, when it is selected from here, the more options menu, that will launch here on the main view, which will raise this event. This event will be raised and the object that will be listening to this needs to be the main presenter. So we need to get to our main presenter And we need to add some items there. So for our constructor on your main presenter, we're going to have Unity create an instance of the help about presenter. And we need to have a field in the presenter to support that, to hold on to it. So that will be a I help about presenter. And in turn, that will be a help about presenter.
and we'll load this value for help presenter at the time the constructor is run here. So Unity will create that for us. And since we're talking about Unity, we need to make sure that the help about presenter and view are registered with Unity. So we'll get to our programs area. Programs file, and we'll add for this. Let's see, we're going to need two new lines. One is for the help about presenter, which will go here. And so that's the presenter. Well, actually, let me change the wording here. First, we put in the interface. And then we put in the presenter. Help about presenter. And we do the same for the view. So this will be help about view and followed by help about view. So it's the I help about view. So interface file for view and then the actual view. Same thing done here with the presenter. I don't need this. So now we're registering the parts for the new items we need instantiated by Unity. And we'll get back now to our presenter. We need to add a subscription section to subscribe to events. In our, our uh, main presenter, we have a subscription event setup. We're referencing our main view object and we're calling help about menu click to, no we're saying that this event help about menu click event needs to be um, that, that it needs to be subscribed to and we're having a little bit of a problem here seeing it so let's see if this was uh, declared in the help about or in the help where is, what is this uh, under the main view okay main view do I have that event on the top? Here it is. Do I have it though in the, I probably don't have it in the main view interface file. I've added a lot here to the concrete implementation. It's probably missing. So we're gonna just go with the Visual Studio generation of it. Refactor. Um, Extract interface, yes. All right, this is a, the latest one. We'll take all of this and put it into our original interface file. Because this is an, uh, this is an extra copy with that suffix of one on it. Let's just get to the main view and peek in, well, we don't need this one. Get rid of that and peek into this one and just make sure this has everything from the one we just copied from. Surely does look like it did. Let's see. I think there was one thing that changed in there. Now let's see. All right. We have quite a few event handlers being declared on the top. A few additional variables to provide some animation on a window, which we'll cover later. A list for our buttons on the front screen. This 
Some of these we won't look at until the next video because I just basically added everything in to support the rest of the application. So things like expand user control panel, you've probably seen the the detail window slide up. That's and then like grow back to the original size. This is what the expand is for. Setting the visibility for the controls in the panel. Unload. So our main focus again is for the um, support of that help about window. So I don't want to get too lost into these other parts we haven't developed yet, like the plants button that brings up the plant view and the news button view and the department view. That will come on the next video. I'm just, I just put them here to get this out because it had support for the context menu and the help about window we just put in. So let's see if we can actually run this right now. Starting up, not quite center, but let's see. All right, that's not right. What's supposed to give us a context menu that uh, more options is not firing the right way. Let's see what's going on there. Okay, that's the wrong that's the wrong method to call. We want to call the more options menu picture box. Let's try that again. All right, let's fix this window centering <clears throat> problem as well. Okay, and there's our context menu. Click help about, and that is correct. And we are pulling the values from the assembly information. That's looking good. Now there was one item that I did have to change. If we look at the main presenter, I believe it is. I had a subscribe to events set up, but I hadn't forgotten to add it here. So I did add it later, just so you're aware of that. And so I think now there's, this is a good example of how the message flow is working here. Let's go over to the main window and we can kind of trace this. So let's see here. So we're in the more options. Um, context menu was raised. Well, when it opened up, it it had an event here. Click to go to help about. Help about then raised this event. So this event needed to be subscribed to by the main presenter. Let's go over to the main presenter to check that one out. Help about. Go to main presenter. And here's subscribe events. We see that. It had subscribed to the event of on of um, help about menu click, and assigned it to on help about menu click event raised method, which is here. So then this was fired, and then once this was fired, it obtained access to the help about view and called an operation show help event show help about view. So we started with the main presenter, main um, view. It raised an event, which the main presenter here in this window now uh, received and handled. And then the main presenter decided to use its instance of help about presenter and told it to show itself here. So let's go ahead and run this to uh, follow that. So as you can see, when we're starting, the subscribe event um, process is already taking place because Unity is creating this instance of main presenter. And so the 
constructor ran, which had the subscribe to event setup method here. So this ran as soon as the operation started. It's basically subscribing to the event that is stored in the in the main view. Let's continue. Windows up, we click and select help about. And the help about event has been triggered from the context menu and it's going to raise an event here. Help about menu click event raise. That should be captured over in the main presenter. So let's continue. Now we're in the main presenter window. We can see up here. And we are in we are in the on help about menu click event raised method. It starts with the word on. And this was here, designated here, that this was the operation to run when the event was raised from here, main view, help about menu click. So this worked. The subscription told it to go here when it happens, and it did. And now it's going to get the main, um, get the help about view and tell it to show itself. And it, well, there we go. So, that's the end of uh, this video. I hope it provides a uh, well enough example of how the main, how the view and the presenter are communicating with each other using events. It's not necessary for a view to have an instance of the presenter. There are some applications that do like to do it that way. It might actually be less work if you do it that way. I wanted to see how it worked with the messages, uh, raising events. So uh, hopefully that was interesting to you as well. So that will do it for today. Hopefully there'll be time for another video. Uh, thank you for watching.